everyone, I'm Natalia Bilbao, and here's what's happening in LA this week. The Barrando Sage Housing Complex, which will have 42 units of affordable housing, is the latest grand opening that shows the city's commitment to ending homelessness. Mayor Baz was in attendance to highlight the importance of providing permanent supportive housing and services to help people thrive. We're here today for the grand opening of Barendo Sage. It's 42 units of affordable housing. Half of the units are permanent supportive housing, so they're reserved for people who have experienced homelessness. So that's half our building. The other half are, are low-income people who work in Los Angeles but can't afford to live here. And now they are able to, to live in, uh, in the community where they work. We have to build housing everywhere, and everybody in Los Angeles has to say, I can find a place in my neighborhood to build. The main thing that we provide here is we provide ongoing services. So the services help people connect with their medical providers, connect with banking. And the services are really what I think makes our, uh, our organization special because what we try to do is not only build these beautiful buildings, but provide the services to make sure that people who live here can thrive in the buildings. When I heard I was moving in here, I cried. It has really been an eye opener for me because when I wake up in the morning, I'm able to, to do something positive with myself. Not only get up in the morning, but to bathe, to cook, to be productive, to meet new people and share the gift of how I made it this far to be in this position. We save the best for our residents. We have our community room here on the roof deck opening out with spectacular views of the city of Los Angeles because we want these spaces to be special for our residents to come together and really feel a sense of pride in the places they're living. This is what we need to do. We have to bring people out of these tents into temporary housing, but the goal is this, which is permanent, supportive housing. This is what we need in our city. Having Mayor Bass here really showed the commitment that she has to ending homelessness in, in Los Angeles. We're doing our part, the city is doing their part. It's going to take a lot of effort, but today was one step in that direction. We are thrilled to be here today to celebrate this achievement and the 42 units of housing. If you've considered working for the City of LA, the Public Works Department has plenty of opportunities. They recently held a career fair in Council District 10 to give hopeful candidates the chance to discover what career and growth opportunities are available. Check it out. We're at the Michelle and Barack Obama Sports Complex. We are having a career fair and it's so exciting. Look at all the people that are here in our community looking for employment with the city. We're meeting folks all the time. There's always so much turnaround because we have folks retiring, we have folks to get promoted, and then there's more opportunity to go up. So I've seen folks coming in at maintenance labor, moving all the way up the ranks. You can start in Rec and Parks Department. You can move to a Public Works Department. You can move to General Manager. That's the great thing about the city is that there's growth opportunities. The reason why we do these events is so that we can go out to the community and that we can hire and recruit from community. Those that have questions or might have a difficult time finding what link to apply through, today we are here to help them with that. We're doing interviews on the spot for our maintenance team. We have flexible hours. You can work in your community, growth opportunities, which means that once you get experience, you can have the opportunity to become a full-time employment with the city of Los Angeles. Opportunities that we're offering with aquatics are based of our aquatic programs. So there are pool clerk positions, lifeguard, locker attendants, and recreational instructors. They're all part-time positions. There's so much mobility within all the bureaus. This is why it's so important to at least get your foot in, because you go entry level, but then from there, there's so much more opportunities going up. We have jobs available in the city of Los Angeles, and we need to fill them with people right here in our community.
Keeping the streets of LA clean is an arduous task that requires many hands on deck. To bring more maintenance professionals on board, the Public Works Department has created Clean LA, a program which gives participants the training they need to apply for a permanent city maintenance position. Clean LA is our employment to pathways uh, program, which is a 12 month, almost 1900 hours of public right of way cleanup. So they get this experience of how to clean in public right of way areas. And once they're done, they do a performance test and they do an evaluation. Now we attest their hours. And once they, we attested their hours, we can then say these folks are certified and eligible to now apply into a maintenance labor position for the city. This program not only allows us to address a critical need that we need in the city to clean our neighborhoods and clean our corridors, but also provide opportunities of jobs and generational wealth for the people that live in our city of Los Angeles. I'm able to support myself. I'm able to do something positive and destructive with the job. But the biggest joy for me is I'm able to go cash a check just to take the pride and the privilege that I'm cashing my check. The joy of knowing I, I work for this is something I'm doing for myself, but I'm doing for my community as well. Me being an ex-felon, I, I don't have a chance to get hired with the city, so I was surprised when they said there's a training you want to go on my bus. So I went and come to find out it's my graduation of completing 1,920 hours. I work uh, as a street maintenance for a year and I graduated and uh, here I am standing here today. It has encouraged me and gave me a new horizon, a new goal to set forth to. And so once I see that I was offered a chance for a second opportunity to do right in society, I was grateful, I was thankful. It opened the door to me to make a decision about what my future retirement would be like and making plans for the future for my daughter uh, and also be proud of myself. To learn more about the Clean LA Public Works program and how to sign up, visit dpw.lacity.org. Did you know that the Los Angeles and Long Beach ports account for $5 billion a year in U.S. Customs revenues? In order to keep the current and future workers up to speed with technology updates, regulations, and good practices, the state of California will fund the creation of the LA Goods Movement Training Campus. We are here in Wilmington, and we are with the Long Beach Port, the LA Port, all of labor, the ILWU, and the Pacific Maritime Association coming together with the state legislature because we were receiving a $110 million check to build the campus. The Goods Movement Training Campus has been a dream for a long time, a way that we can help our current workforce keep up with changes in the industry and get new people involved in what we do with shipping and ports and transportation. It truly is a great day of support from the state of California to our local businesses. When it is built, and it, it will be a few years uh, by the time that it gets built, but people from the community from all over will be able to come here and learn how to save be a longshoreman, be trained in what is involved in unloading a ship, what is involved in truck driving when you come to the port, pick up a container, how do you put it on properly, how do you not have an accident while you're doing this kind of work. The whole business of logistics because the goods come in on a ship, they have to be unloaded, then they have to be put in a truck, then they get shipped out to a warehouse. All of that will make sense to the people that come to get trained here. If you're a young student going to school and you want to be a part of this port, you could talk to a counselor and see how you could get involved. If you're more my age and you need new skills to keep up with technology, we can help you there too. And if you're with our Longshore Union, you will have a dedicated stream of experts to help keep building your schools. What today's event shows is that we, as a local government, as a state government, as a community, we are committed to workers in the port. We want to make sure that we hang on to those great jobs that already exist, build new jobs, and make sure there's opportunities for the families of today and the families of tomorrow to have good work and safe working conditions and good salaries in and around the port complex.
The LADOT pilot program, Code the Curve, will launch in the summer. The San Fernando Valley Youth Leadership Academy is accepting applications, and a city action to preserve Skid Row housing is announced. These stories up next on City Beat. The Los Angeles Department of Transportation, LADOT, was awarded a $2 million grant by the U.S. Department of Transportation. Received from the Strengthening Mobility and Revolutionizing Transportation, or SMART grant program, the Code the Curb pilot will begin in the summer of 2023. The pilot program, which will start in the downtown area, will give Los Angeles a digital approach to managing the public right-of-way. Through Code the Curb, LADOT can develop a database of curbs, signs, and markings to build better tools to move more safely through our streets. To learn more about Code the Curb and the work of LADOT, visit ladot.lacity.org slash Code the Curb. Applications are now open for the 2023 class of the San Fernando Valley Youth Leadership Academy. The academy is open to high school students who live or attend school in the San Fernando Valley portion of the city of LA. Created by Council President Paul Krikorian, the program encourages youth to cultivate their interest in public service. The academy is seeking high school students who are responsible and inquisitive about the functions and purpose of city government. The program meets Monday through Friday from July 24th through August 4th, 2023, with applications due June 23rd. For more information on the San Fernando Valley Youth Leadership Academy and to apply, go to cd2.lacity.gov slash leadership. Mayor Karen Bass and City Attorney Heidi Feldstein Soto announced a city action to preserve and rehabilitate about 2,000 housing units in Skid Row. The buildings were owned by the Skid Row Housing Trust, which recently declared their inability to continue operating them. A petition was filed for a public health and safety receivership, nominating Mark Adams of the California Receivership Group to take control of the units. By taking this action, Bass and Feldstein Soto say the collaboration will keep 1,500 Angelinos housed and enable hundreds more to move off the streets. For more info, visit mayor.lacity.gov and cityattorney.lacity.gov. As LA City Controller, Kenneth Mejia and his team make sure every city expense and payment is accounted for. Channel 35 recently had the opportunity to hear about his first 100 days in office. Finding solutions for the homelessness is at the top of his list, as well as offering policymakers information to better understand the community they serve. Take a look. So the city controller's office is the city's accountant, auditor, and paymaster. So as the city's accountant, we're in charge of ensuring that all financial transactions and money spent is being accounted for. We create the proper reports. We're taking the budget that's approved by council and the mayor and assuring that that money is being appropriated as approved by them. We're also, as the city's auditor, in charge of making sure that departments get audited in terms of finding any ineffectiveness or any inefficiencies or deficiencies in their processes so that we can help improve them. As a city's paymaster, we're in charge of making sure vendors get paid and also employees for the city get paid as well. So it's a big job and I love it. Also in our first 100 days, we created a map of unhoused debts that shows the public and policymakers where unhoused people have passed away so that it can help policymakers address the issues of homelessness. We've also begun our monitoring efforts of city activities whether it relates to the housing department, the police department, animal services, or homelessness. In addition, we've started audits related to homelessness that has to deal with the pathways to getting permanent housing and also how we can improve getting into interim housing. Being able to get an inside look at how the city operates and then trying to come up with solutions by meeting with the people in our city family and understanding how can we make this better, how can we make this more efficient. And I think that's been a really great opportunity to have as someone who's in here whose job is to find efficiencies and effectiveness. 
None of this could have been done without the great, amazing divisions and our team here. So I just want to say thank you to our team and the LA Controller's office. From our city controller's office to our police department, stick around for a conversation with LAPD Chief Michael Moore. Can you comprise 150 years of history into one exhibition? That is what the Los Angeles Public Library has accomplished with LAPL 150. Our story is yours. Attendees can get a close look at some materials from the late 19th century and an overview of the evolution of this quiet place that speaks volumes. Check it out. We're standing in the middle of our recently opened exhibition, LAPL 150, Our Story is Yours, and it's designed to, in this one space, tell 150 years of history of the Los Angeles Public Library system. The Los Angeles Public Library formed in 1872 when the population of our city was only 6,000 people, and a group of residents got together at the Merced Theater and decided we want a library. I think we have close to 400 photos represented in the exhibition and our friends over in the um, special collections department dug in the archives so we could really pull out some special materials. Handwritten, you know, minutes and logs from when the library system first formed. We dug out the old library cards so people can come in and see the evolution of the library cards. We really wanted to represent all of our branches, and so we have a wall-sized slideshow that has close to 200 slides. I like to think the library's been incredibly important. That, that's our mission. Our mission is to serve the community. That's why we exist. During the war, you know, we served um, soldiers when making sure they have books, but our doors were also open during the Depression for people to come in. We help people get their high school diplomas. There is plenty of opportunity for people to come downtown and see this incredible exhibition. The story of the Los Angeles Public Library system really is the story of Los Angeles. Dogs are man's best friend and can in some cases become heroes in the face of disasters. The Los Angeles Fire Department officially retired two of its most loyal and hardworking canines. With thousands of hours of training and work by their handler's side, Veya and Blue have now earned the right to play with their toys and enjoy their retirement. Today we are going to recognize the careers of two outstanding canines. It's going to be HRD Canine Vea and Accelerant Detection Canine Blue. And these incredible dogs have truly been of great value during investigations of areas impacted by fire and other types of disasters. Vea is an American lab and she's a human remains detection canine. She's just over 11 years old and has been certified working for nine years. This is Blue, has been my partner for seven years. He belongs to ATF, which is the Department of Justice. He's been loyal servant to the citizens of Los Angeles for the last seven years, and he's nine years old. She doesn't know she's retired. <laughs> so I'll still do training with my canine friends that we go out. So she'll still get to run you know, here and there, what's, what she's able to. But we do a lot of hiking and camping, and she loves swimming and chasing her toy. That, that's pretty much what will occupy her time. I don't think I want to let him retire. I think he just wants to come with me still. He gets up in the morning just like we come to work. I think he still wants to come out and do his thing, even though he doesn't have to work. He's a great dog. He's very, uh, he's very mellow. Best partner I've ever had. When you look at the canines here, this is a team. This is thousands of hours of training. And this is to provide an exceptional tool to the community of LA and outside, like we talked from regional to the national level. So thank you so much for everybody to be here to celebrate the hard work and dedication of the handlers and our exceptional canines. We wish you the best of luck. And again, thank you everybody for your service and dedication. In this week's feature story, our own Maria Hall Brown sits down with Los Angeles Police Department Chief Michael Moore. Now on his second term, he discusses the department's effort to establish stronger bonds with the community so that together we can all contribute to keep the streets of LA safe. Let's hear the story. 
On January 31st, the LA Police Commission unanimously voted to reappoint Chief Michael Moore to his second term, and I'm delighted to welcome him into the studio today to talk all about everything. So good to have you here. It's great to be here. Thank you. All right. You institutionalized the community safety partnership model and focused on community engagement, but in a very real way, why is this important to you? Well, the Community Safety Partnership Initiative is about building communities' capacity to take on more responsibilities for their own welfare, for their own improvement of safety conditions by understanding how city government works, how social programs are supposed to work, and the interplay with the department is really uh, the glue that, that comes to a community and says, I know that you've distrusted not just the police, but there's a mistrust of government. We have failed you, the police, and others on so many different fronts. And we want to bring with a group of officers have, who have been specially trained and are committed to staying in your community for the next five years. Uh, we want to have them come and sit down and hear and listen to your experience. You have this uh, balance that you need to maintain between recruitment and also making sure that the mental health capacity and capability of your officers is sound. So how is that being addressed now when you are looking to uh, expand and you know hire, but at the same time hire the right people? So that's the thing. To your audience, I want to say we're hiring. Uh, and we're hiring not just police officers. We're hiring nearly every position in the organization. Uh, Mayor Bass is committed to rebuilding this organization, adding more than 500 of our personnel uh, back into the workforce. That's going to allow us to deepen our community policing, and be able to expand our community safety partnerships in more neighborhoods, expand the number of senior leads, uh, deepen our work with alternative services, improve our technology. There's a whole host of things we have before us. Uh, and that, that it excites me. It gives me an opportunity to look and say, there's more work to be done, and let's get, let's get to it. Chief Moore, thank you so much for this. And if people want to learn about the opportunities for employment with the LAPD or what's going on with the LAPD, what's the best way? Well, first of all, they can volunteer. Come down to any of our 21 police stations. Uh, we have some 2,000 plus volunteers. We would love to have them join us as a, as a community volunteers. There's a host of, uh, of, of volunteer efforts that they can do. They can get behind the curtain. Secondly, if they want to be a little more distant than that, they can come to town halls and, and join us in neighborhood watch meetings and coffee with the cops. And then lastly, if they just want to go to the online site, they can go to LAPD online and they can look there and they can see a host of uh, thousands of pages and videos and, and, and vignettes and other information about all aspects of our operations. But whatever they do, I would ask that they be involved. The city of Los Angeles is a safer city when all Angelinos are working together for just that goal. Participate in the 2023 Lego Shipbuilding Contest. Join the bird watching tour of the Bologna wetlands or attend the music exhibition Bularanga and Beyond. All this up next on Things to Do. Ships Ahoy! The Los Angeles Maritime Museum is calling captains of all ages to the 2023 Lego Shipbuilding Contest. Prizes will be awarded according to age groups, starting with three to five year olds, all the way up to 14 years and over. All ships must be created at the museum with the Legos they provide and will remain on display at the museum after the winners are announced. Both the contest and museum admission are free, so bring the whole family for this fun event. The Lego Shipbuilding Contest will be held at the LA Maritime Museum in San Pedro on Saturday, April 15th. The shipbuilding begins at 10 a.m. and ends promptly at 2 p.m. Log on to lamaritimemuseum.org for more information. The LA Public Library invites you to a bird watching tour of the Bologna wetlands. LA's only remaining saltwater marsh consists of just over 600 acres of marshes, habitats, and seasonal wetlands. The wetlands are home to such wildlife as the savannah sparrow, the great blue heron, and the snowy egret. The walk is geared for the beginner and intermediate birder who are looking for an introduction to local feathered friends. The bird watching tour of the Bologna wetlands is Saturday, April 15th. Meet the tour group at the Playa Vista Branch Library at 9.30 a.m. 
Log on to lapl.org slash events for more information. The William Grant Still Art Center presents its 15th annual African American Composer Series, Bularenge and Beyond, subtitled Learning the Palin Cues of the Southeast Caribbean Through Sound. This exhibit looks beyond U.S. borders into the Caribbean coast. With origins in the Congo, Angola, and West Africa, we learned that Bularenge, Cumbia, and Salsa use sounds and polyrhythms that are found in nature. The exhibition also features vibrant Caribbean Pico culture, huge hand-painted speaker stacks that project music out to the community. Bolerengue and Beyond is on exhibit at the William Grant Steel Art Center now through July 2023. For more information, log on to wgsac.wordpress.com. And that's a look at some things to do. And that's it for this edition. I'm Natalia Bilbao, and from all of us here at LA This Week, thank you so much for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org, and we're also on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. See you next time for more LA This Week. <laughs>